Alright guys, today we are going to talk about this very controversial topic here, Satan's Little Season. Are we in that season? Are we not? 
You know, I can't think of anything else or any other time that we could possibly be in than to be in Satan's little season. And, uh, thank you so much, Loyal. Appreciate that. But, uh, when we think about this little season, what do we turn to? Where did we even get this information, the little season? Right? So you wonder, and then you have to ask yourself, where did we get this from? It's quite obvious. We got it from the Bible. So, knowing that it came from the Bible, you then have to ask yourself, do I believe in the Bible? Well, guys, there's too many things that point to the obvious truths when it comes to the Bible. There's too many things that have been proven and have been prophesied and already happened when it comes to the Bible. So anyone can say, man, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in the Bible. What about the Quran? What about Hinduism? What about Allah? What about Buddha? They're just as good. No, they ain't. The truth is, there is a big difference between every other religion when you compare it to the Bible. Like I said yesterday in my live stream, um, when it comes to all those other religions, it takes works. You must do works in order to get you to heaven. But when it comes to the scriptures, it is nothing that you can do lest man boast. Lest you boast about getting there or becoming self-righteous, right? The Bible is the only book that states that it is not of works, but it is of faith and repentance. It's not what you're supposed to do, it's what you don't do. It's not what you need to go out and do, it's what you need to stop doing. Anyways, as you guys can see the photo here, the painting on the left is a depiction of Satan painted by Sir Thomas Lawrence. One second. Yeah, by Thomas Lawrence. And uh, there's a lot of different dates, but it's only between these two, 1796 and 1797. Either way, they're just a year apart. So he painted this in 1796, right? Or 1797. The Statue of Liberty was built in 1875. Let's do some research, guys. So this is an article here talking about the painter Thomas Lawrence who painted this painting. It is quite the royal painting. If you want to read this article, it's pretty long. Well, not really, but I'll link it in the description box below. But basically, basically, it's talking about how royal this painting was. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I'm sorry. One second. 
There you go. But this article here, I'll link it in the uh, description box below so you guys can take a look at it. But anyway, it's talking about how royal this painting is and how expensive it is. Like I said, it was painted in 1796 or 97. Not too sure. But, yeah. They say this guy was so poetic. He was so, uh, he's a very smart guy. So they say, very intellectual, very poetic, but, uh, yeah. Why would someone want to paint a depiction of Saint of Satan and his legions? He obviously had some issue or something because for someone to just casually paint a depiction of Satan and his legion, you gotta ask the question, why did he do that? Why did he paint this? And in fact, when you compare it to the Statue of Liberty, it looks so similar. They look very similar. Let me go back to the picture. Look how similar they look. It's undeniable. It's almost like they're identical. If you look at their faces. And if you look at the timeline from when this was painted to the time this was built, that's about what, a hundred years? Close. Let me see. Let's just do a little math here. By the way, I'm I'm not so great at math. So about 80 years, about 80 years apart. But anyways, let's move along. The Statue of Liberty. Look at the star for it right below it. Looks just like the painting. The only difference is the crown on uh, the statue's head. This crown here. But yeah, it is said that it was built in 1875 by, uh, what's his name? Frederick Auguste Barthody. Now, Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, check this out, guys, was a Freemason. It says here in Wikipedia, in 1875, he joined the Freemasons Lodge. In 1876, Bartholdi was one of the French commissioners in 1876 to the Philadelphia Sentinel Exposition. But it says here, he was in fact a Freemason, and the year given is 1875. The same time this star or this uh, Statue of Liberty was built. Oh, wow. Appreciate that so much, Laura Tanji. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Blessings, brother. Seriously. I wasn't expecting that, man. 
You really didn't have to do that. But appreciate that so much, man. But anyways, Auguste Bartholdi, Frederick Bartholdi, was a Freemason. And those of you know, those of you who know who the Freemasons are, they claim to be the enlightened ones. When in fact, they are the dark ones. There's nothing enlightening about them. They keep so many secrets from us. Anyways, back to Thomas Lawrence, the one who painted this depiction of Satan. We know they look so similar when it comes to this painting of Satan and his legions and the Statue of Liberty. But when you look further into Thomas Lawrence and his history, he it doesn't say that he was a Freemason, but it says five of his brothers became involved in Freemasonry. You see that? Five of his brothers. So if five of his brothers were Freemasons, then that means it's not hard to believe that he was either. And see, this is talking about the Thomas Lawrence that was born in 1769, the one who painted this depiction of Satan. Thomas Lawrence. There's a little Wikipedia on him. So it's not hard for me to believe that both these men, Thomas Lawrence and Frederick Augusta Bartholdi, are in fact Freemasons. It is crazy when people become in denial and say, uh, whatever, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a painting. It's just a statue. Guys, <laughs> let me just remind you that the Statue of Liberty also had a chain on it. There's a chain. If I go to that picture real quick. Statue of Liberty chain. But this picture right here See if I can blow it up. Yeah, this picture right here. What, what does it mean? What does it mean to you guys? This is where you have to sit and humble yourself and Ask yourself honestly, what do these depictions mean? Why is the statue in chains? And it's almost as if he broke the chain. It's like the chain is broken. As you can see here on this corner here where the bolt is, it's as if Satan was loosed. You see what I'm getting, guys? The Statue of Liberty, you can call it what you want to call it. But the fact that Freemasons were involved with both these things, the Statue of Liberty and this painting, these things had to happen right around the reset. Let's go to scripture. But before we do, I'm going to read some of these real quick. Thank you so much for this. Yes. I really appreciate the effort you put into your videos. And I know your subscribers will grow. Keep it up. Man. Loyal. Bro, man. I'm going to have to uh, talk with you personally, man. Because uh, I know it's off topic, but my email is in my about me. So if you can, in my about section on YouTube, 
if you can please email me I need to get in contact with you bro um and you know what it's about but um there was a lot of technical difficulties I'll, I'll explain it to you in email but yeah seriously bro thank you so much man I was not expecting that you you hit me with that out of nowhere <laughs> I'm like yeah but uh yeah crazy right so both the people that um made these things the person who painted this was a freemason the person who built this was a freemason now when we go to scripture Revelations chapter 20 And I saw an angel come down from heaven Having the key of the bottomless pit And a great chain in his hand And he laid hold on that dragon The old serpent Which is the devil Let me just go back And I saw an angel come down from heaven Having the key of the bottomless pit And a great chain Folks a great chain in his hand it's not a coincidence folks this chain is the same chain depicted on the Statue of Liberty's feet and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled that's key guys till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season he must be loosed and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Those are the ones who were martyred in the time of uh, Emperor Nero. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You see what I'm saying, guys? It's just so obvious that we are in that little season. How long is that little season? Honestly, in my opinion, because the millennial reign was a thousand years, a little season is a quarter of that, which is 250. 250 years. So that is my opinion on just how long this little season is. 250 years. Now, if we go to the years where... The Statue of Liberty was built and that painting was painted by uh, Thomas Lawrence. If we go to those years, let me just pull up my calculator real quick. So let's say what, 1796, 1796, plus 250 years, that's 2046. But in my opinion, I believe the reset happened before this. It happened before 1796. It seems as if Satan was loosed. In my opinion, let's see. Let me 
doing some calculations here. So right around 1775-1776. So if we... Let me just... If we add 250 years... Let me share this. There you go. Perfect. So if we add 250 years from 1776, what year is that? 2026. Isn't that crazy, guys? That means this little season could end right around 2026 or 25, 2025. All I know is that this little season is very close to coming to an end. They're trying to deceive everyone about, you know, oh, the rapture is coming. Bro, the rapture passed. The time when he caught them up, the ones who were martyred for Christ and the ones who were in the grave, those days are gone. Those times passed. Yes, I'll email you, no worries, on the technical stuff. You're speaking truth, and I feel compelled to be here. Appreciate that so much, Laura Tanji. And yes, it, it explains so much, right? When all you have to do is read. That is all we have to do. Read and do the research. Now the question remains, what happens after this? After this little season of Satan's little reign his little time of deception you know what happens after well let's read along that's the only way we'll find out what would happen after blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Exactly. He shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire of, uh, and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I'm going to stop right here when it comes to the reading because that's going to be a separate video uh, titled, I'm al it's already in the works, but it's going to be titled Surrounding the Camp of the Saints. But I wanted to make this to let people know that we are definitely in this little season. It all points to it. You know, many people will look at you like you're crazy because, I mean, you and I both know, loyal, 
There's only a small group of people that know these things. A very small group of people that believe it. But there's a great majority of people that believe the traditional stories of Revelation. Most of them believe that Satan um, has yet to come for his little season. But I have to say that we are already in it. And to be honest with you, it, it makes me excited to just know that we are in it because the closer we are, the better. You know, now I don't have to think about the rapture happening. I don't have to think about, you know, post or pre-trib when all that stuff is already passed. Now the question is though, what do we do during this little season? That's the big question. Because whether or not we are in this little season, let's say that it is a fact, an indefinite fact that we are in this little season. Let's just say that, all right? What do we do? then well the answer is simple guys it is to remain righteous it is to remain in repentance it is to remain fearless there is nothing to fear all you gotta do is his will. Stay on the righteous path. Stay out of sin. If you can do that, then you're home free. There's nothing else that Satan can do. Yes, we can be in his little season, but when your eyes are opened and you know these things, whether or not we are, the most important thing is that you are right by God. By Yahweh, the Father. That is the most important thing. Because we can, like I said, we could talk about these things all day. And forget. That the main point is to remain on his side. And how do you remain on his side? Repent. Believe that the son died for us. Believe that we have a father in heaven waiting for us to come home. That is the most important thing. But I truly believe that we are definitely in this season. Definitely. Anyone can say otherwise, but if someone can do some research and prove me otherwise, or not even prove me, just make a video showing proofs that we are not in the little season. Because everything that I've researched so far, all points to that we are in the little season now. Every word that, or Manu says, Matthew 24, 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Yes. That's one proof that lets us know that that generation and those things already passed. Every word that Yahshua says will always come to pass. He said this generation and he meant it. Second coming has passed and we are in the little season mentioned in Revelation. Yes. We are fortunate brother. We see the truth through the lies. No fear is the greatest feeling. Yes, the devil used to be able to physically hurt us, but now in the little season, he can only deceive us. 
to hurt ourselves or others. Definitely, brother. He only has little limited power. And that is correct. That's all he can do is deceive us and tempt us. Other than that, <laughs> that's all. That's all he can do. But yeah, folks, that is the most important thing. Is to remain on the side of the Father. Being in repentance, sinning no more. Being on guard and ready for whatever this government is going to do. This is why I tell my relatives, I am not worried about what this government is planning. I can care less about what they have planned. Because when they do surround that camp of the saints, they will be devoured by the Father. So yeah, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end it today. I really just wanted to come on here and let people know that we are in this little season. And those two men, Frederick, Barthody, and Thomas Lawrence, are Freemasons. Until next time, guys. And you can change it in a naked time. Even if you decide to leave the stars behind. You say one word, I say amazing. Yeah. Yeah.